What's going on, everybody? Thank you all so much for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are so excited. I hope you are pumped right now for the most action-packed hour you have ever received in your entire life. Why? Because this hour got it all, baby. Hope, inspiration, motivation, encouragement, empowerment, the whole nine, baby. So grab a chair, pull up a couple shots, let your hair down, and kick those shoes off, and get ready to receive the most jam-packed hour you have ever received in your entire life, baby. Let's go! Woo! Hi, this is Pam. Ben Gillette, Penn and Teller. Big guy does magic, smaller guy next to me. He does magic too. He doesn't talk that much. I want to talk about uh, Joseph Jaffe is not famous. And Joseph Jaffe is not famous. Joseph Jaffe is wicked not famous. Joseph Jaffe is superlatively not famous. And for good and sufficient reason. I mean, maybe his guests are famous. Maybe his guests are famous. He gets some famous people on his guests, but Joseph Jaffe himself is not famous. That's the important part. You can have famous guests and still not be famous. And if you want an example of that, well, Joseph Jaffe would be a really good example. Teller would do a better job at a talk show, and Teller doesn't talk, which you'd think would be one of the major qualifications of being on a talk show <laughs> and not being famous. What's that, Teller? Oh, yeah, Teller says, Joseph Jaffe. Not famous. Love you. Peace. This is my best kind of show notes. We didn't touch one of them. One of them. Not even one of them. I'm not sure which one is Paul Rudd and which one is Lane Green. Final card here is the, the ultimate outcome. Today is take your dog to work day. Oh, like Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Without further ado, his debut, Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Sammy. Is I'm that not good? I'm just pausing so that you just are up in front of your seat. I'm so enormously flattered. Branding is not a bad blind date. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this. No, this is agape. This is love. I really enjoyed this. You did do your homework. You asked great questions. I'm flattered. Thank you. You just, you just made my day. Look at you! You are I mean, insane. How did I do that? You're how insane. Did I do that? You're insane. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody. It is time for another episode of Joseph Jaffe is not famous. I mean, you heard from Penn Gillette. I am decidedly, wickedly not famous. But my next guest, he didn't just get seen, he got seen. He is uh, Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com and more on him in just a short while. I have had a hell of a day, a, a good day, a good day in a good way started with cardiac rehab at uh, 7 a.m left the house at about 6 30 in the morning uh, i walked the dog uh, i drove all the way to danbury and taught a two and a half hour class at the university at, at western connecticut state university and now i am back here just in time to be with you and to hang out with you and that means of course a little bit of jaffe coin there's the qr code some of uh i know i have some regular rally uh users that are getting coin every single night <clears throat> i appreciate you i love you uh, i prefer you not to sell the coin but even if you do that's fine too the coin is designed to give you back something if you are watching live and of course the coin is only live when the show is live this is part of the streaming era the creator economy it is something that steve garfield knows uh, all about but let's talk about next week's guests before we focus on this week's guests and tonight's guest Suzanne Kunkel, she is the Chief Marketing Officer of Deloitte. She will be my guest on Monday. Gary Henderson, who just brought out a book, Clubhouse Creator. Whitney Lawrenson, who is a fellow Creator Coin holder, she will be on Wednesday. And then Glenn Lundy, who's doing some amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, not just stuff, he owns breakfast. He owns uh, breakfast and he will be on on the final show of 2021 then i wrap it up i calm it down i slow it down i take a little bit of a break 
And I think about how I want to retool and rethink uh, and evolve the show. <clears throat> I'm getting all verklempt. The show in 2022. I can tell you one thing just between us. Don't tell anybody because it's just, you know, it's very intimate. The show will be moving to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daily Time, Mr. Steve Garfield, uh, in order to take advantage, I think, of uh, a larger live audience, West Coast, East Coast, Europe, South Africa, the United Kingdom. And to be really honest with you, um, it was difficult at night. Uh, that's not to say I'm not going to go back to it. I, I may very well go back to it, but 9 p.m. and committed to 9 p.m., was a little a little bit difficult on the family um, and uh, in terms of energy, in terms of my health. Um, so I'm going to keep moving around, trying out new things and see what happens. So I will not rule out getting back to 9 p.m., but 1 p.m. starting in January. So a little bit of breaking news uh, on the show, but uh, let's not worry about the show. Let's focus on the man, the myth, the legend. We're talking about Steve Garfield himself. This may be the only time that I ever show a Boston Red Sox cap on my show. Uh, but Steve Garfield he is an author. He is an influencer. He's an investor. He's an all-around good guy. He's a great son. Uh, and he is an absolute uh, pioneer. And more on that shortly after... I give you the seated soliloquy, which I am calling tonight Streak. My guest tonight understands streaks. He understands consistency. He's been on the leading, even bleeding edge of online video <clears throat> since the very beginning, from web 1.0 through 2.0. And now with the dawn of 3.0, who knows what he'll do next? He's also been ever present in terms of giving me advice on the show ever since I started it. And let me just add, whether I asked for the advice or not, whether a compliment, complaint, or constructive critique, I know that 100% of it is from his heart, authentic, empathetic, and with a single and sole purpose of helping me grow. And with all of this, you'd think he could deliver Jimmy Fallon to me. Well, hope springs eternal. This is soliloquy, however, is about streaks. I'm writing this at 4.30 p.m. and I'm about to teach a two and a half hour international business class at Westcon and then drive back 45 minutes to the global headquarters of Not Famous Land. I'll have about 10 minutes to set up and then it's lights, camera and streaming action. In other words, I actually had about 30 minutes to write the soliloquy or I would break my streak. I've written one of these monologues every single show for what is now almost 18 consecutive months. With the exception of Tom Morris and Jeff Cottrell, guest soliloquying, I've never missed a one. Why are streaks so important? If they weren't, Snapchat would be out of business. But seriously, why are they so important? Is it superstition or is it vanity, pride, ego, stubbornness? Or how about fear? If I miss one, it's all going to come crashing down and all unravel. I won't be able to start up again. You see, the thing about streaks is that they have to come to an end. Eventually, just ask Kel Ripken Jr., and when they do, if they are so unattainable, they may never be broken again. So where's the fun in that? I suppose if you're setting a streak, you might want to create an insurmountable bar for competitive reasons. But what if it's you that needs to start up again? We could be talking about health, fitness, self-improvement, professional development. The possibilities are endless. Which is why tonight, I've decided to end my streak of consecutive soliloquies. I'm not going to post tonight to prove a point that it's okay to stop, take a break, start over. And even if you don't break a record, it's just another pass at potential momentum 
and growth. Wait. Oh crap. Oh well. The streak continues. As Homer would say, yo. Now let's talk about Steve Garfield. Steve Garfield is a visionary who looks at disparate things and sees ways to combine them into new and exciting endeavors. Steve Garfield's video blog, created on January 1st, 2004, was one of the first and longest running video blogs on the web. Steve broke new ground in citizen reporting and live video streaming with his 2004 and 2008 presidential campaigns coverage. Steve started video blogging because he wanted to experiment with new ways of sharing stories using new technologies. The relationships he developed during his video blogging years lead him to invest in people, not technology, people. Garfield's angel investments have been in the fields of video, 3D printing, an auto dealership, and a brewery. Well, let's find out more. Let's bring him on. Mr. Steve Garfield, welcome to the show. Nice, Joseph. Thank you. The brewery. You know, so before we even get into the brewery, you know, I... <laughs> Cheers, yes. okay, yep. Lord Hober, I remember bumping into you at Inbound uh, in, uh, in Boston. I don't know when it was, and we hadn't seen each other in years. And I was just blown away by the fact that Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com uh, was, is an investor uh, and not just an investor, a fairly accomplished one. And, uh, and there is Lord Hobo. Bob Farnham is giving us a, a heart. Hey, Bob. I remember that time. That was new to me, investing in Lord Hobo. And, and I was very excited about it and talking to people at Inbound. And another marketer said to me, you're invested in a brewery. Why don't you have the beers to give us? And I was like, oh, he's right. I should have a beer to give him at Inbound. That would be a perfect opportunity. So I left Inbound <laughs> down to the seaport and I found a nearby package store and I bought a six pack of Lord Hobo beer. I brought it back to the conference. I found that guy and I said, here you go. Here's the beer. And he says, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, that's, that's, that's very much like Peter Sellers, right? Uh, does you dig bite? And then he goes, <laughs> and then he goes, I thought you said your dog didn't bite. And the answer is he's not my dog. I don't drink. So that, you know, that, that would get, uh, that would get a, I got a few sound effects. You know that, you know that. Yeah. So Steve today, uh, you would be happy to know, uh, is the business of popping corn day. Uh, can you believe that there actually is a day? First of all, there is another day dedicated to popcorn, but this is the business of popping corn day, which is an annual holiday celebrated to commemorate the invention of the first large scale commercial oil popcorn popper by Charles Cretors in 1885. How about that? Bringing his name back. I'm sure his family is happy because I've never heard that name before. Excellent. In 1885, the first commercial. Uh, but but I guess, you know, so if we were talking about you being a pioneer uh, in, in video blogging, that might be true. But I guess with moving pictures uh, and with movies, uh, popcorn has been around for a while. And, uh, you know, I guess let's just celebrate him, shall we? Okay. Congratulations. All right. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Buy yourself a popcorn. Now, Steve, um, you know the show. You know that we normally do fun facts uh, about our guests. But I have to tell you, I just abandoned this concept altogether with you because I feel your entire life is just a compendium of fun facts. Uh, in fact, you even sent me this thing called 25 random things about me. Um, you know, you you are the best guest I've ever had. And you know that I say that to all my guests, especially when, you know, I say this is the best show I've ever done. Because, I mean, you sent me notable moments in Steve Garfield's life. You sent me the world according to Garp 
and Steve Garfield, your principles, your principles of life. Um, so I think we're just going to go through your life uh, as a series of fun facts about you. You are a man that lives life, that loves life. I think you are the epitome, my friend, uh, of just joy and joie de vivre and uh, and just just enjoying every moment we have on this earth. Well, I try to. That's your answer. I try to. <laughs> I'm waiting for a profound uh, a profound soundbite. <laughs> well, what do you what do you have for a fun fact? Well, I've well, listen. First of all, let's start with this. So, when I posted about the show today. Uh, you know, Cyrus Crone, a previous guest on the show, he said, these were the first video bloggers. Uh, and he directed me to something called bloggingheads.tv. Now, first of all, I've never heard of bloggingheads.tv. Um, have you heard of them? Yes. Yeah. And and who was, who, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the Garfield or the bloggingheads.tv? Well, it, it says that they were founded in 2005, and I started blogging on January 1st, 2004. So, I mean, the dates show that I was before them. Well, I will tell you that I was not prepared. I said, they, them, them are fighting words, Cyrus Crone. So I went out and I did a bit of uh, digging oh. myself. <laughs> there and it so, is. There it is. 2004, the year of the video blog. Uh, I think Steve Garfield wins by uh, by a full year, Thank even you. with your 582 readers, according to Feedburner. Um, so <laughs> Feedburner, how oh, nice! There you go. I I I, I have more uh, because not only not only were you uh, the first, it would appear, um, but you were even the poster child. Um, mentioned in Time magazine, see me, blog me, touch me, feel me, a little bit of a, a Tommy, uh, a, a Tommy uh, reference. Uh, but tell us about this experience being in Time magazine. That was amazing. Uh, the, the reporter uh, found me. And he, so when you look for people who are video blogging, I was one of the first video bloggers. And he just was saying, wow, people, you know, other than reporters are telling stories. And then he interviewed me about what I was doing and what, what that might mean to, to reporting. So I want to, I want to kind of deconstruct a little bit and, and, and talk about um, you've touched so many important um, aspects and facets of what we consider to be normal and mainstream, but these are profoundly transformational moments, this idea of online video, right? Um, video blogging, and really the early parts of citizen journalism. Um, and, and this was at a time, and I think it's important for people to recognize, this was at a time when the iPhone did not exist. So now it's easy. Now it's, it's easier. It's easy. Now everyone is a citizen journalist and you know, everything that happens is going to be recorded. Um, but what was it about this time? Uh, what was it about video blogging that 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 excited you and 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 citizen journalism? And did you know at that point that this was going to stick and be and 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 how big it was going to be? And it, to the point of the fact that it's changed the world. What was exciting was the ability to figure out how to shoot video and get it on the web back in 2004. I'd been, I started blogging in 1997, back when I, I was a producer for a radio show in, in Boston in the mornings. And um, blogging back then, I mean, I, there, there wasn't any blogger back in 97. I think blogger came out in 2000. So, uh, Guests would come in each day to the show, and I thought, why don't I make it given an easy way for the listeners to find out like what record or what book they were promoting? So I made a website, and I would put in the date that they came in, their name, and wrote a little something about what they were promoting. And then the next day, when the next guest came in, I would go into the HTML code, copy it, paste it 
on top of what I had written before and changed all the words and then, you know, made that live. So that was like blogging. I, w- I was doing that all by myself, figuring it out. So that was exciting. And then in 2000, Blogger came out, which allowed you to just type in what you wanted and, and Blogger did all that work. So that was a breakthrough. And a lot of people found blogging when, when, when Blogger came out. And over time, I was interested in video and I worked in public access TV. And over there, this was separate from the blogging, I learned, they taught me everything about video, how to run cameras, how to do editing on this old tape to tape contraption, two, like two VCRs. You would play one of what you wanted and record the little bit on the other one, and it was all very mechanical. So I, I had a show, Steve's show. This was, oh, I, I couldn't even tell you what year that was, but it was way before the video blogging. And then one day I met someone who was working with an Avid. I don't know if you know the Avid video editor. That was used probably in ad agencies and making commercials, but commercially very expensive. And he brought me in and showed me what that was. And I was blown away at how much easier it made it to edit video than what I was doing with the with the two VCRs. And then um, Apple came out with Final Cut Pro. And I got a a Macintosh and Final Cut Pro and a Canon GL2 camera. And then I was able to take my own videos and edit them and make my videos on the computer. So I had that whole background in video. And then I had the blogger background in blogging and telling stories by writing and sharing photos. And then in January 1st, 2004, I thought, Blogger made it so easy to share text on the web. Why hasn't anybody made it easy to share video on the web? So I went into the HTML code because I knew it and figured out how to share video on a blog. And I combined what I knew about video and what I knew about blogging. And I made a type pad blog and I called it Steve Garfield's video blog. And I put video on it. And that's the little picture you showed. And I made a little video and I said, 2004 is the year of the video blog. And that was my first video blog. And that's how all the excitement about me figuring out how to do it. And so then from then on, my posts on my video blog were sharing with people what I what I learned. Here's how you shoot video. Here's how you get it on the computer. Here's how you compress it so that you could show it on the web. Here's how you host it on the web. And I would just post these things on my blog and share, you know, what I was learning. And then other people from all around the world found me, I found them, and we were all figuring this out at the same time. And that's, that's how that whole excitement of figuring out how to put video on the web happened back early 2004. There there are a bunch of things that, that uh, I want to unpack from what you just said. The first is this idea, you know, I was, I I jotted down this idea of what's in a name. And what I mean by that is you were blogging before blogging existed, before it was called blogging. Um, Right. You, you know, so, so often we need to give things a name and we need, and we need other people to give it a name. And you just went and innovated. You just went and figured out a solution. Um, And, you know, I, I even think back to, when I wrote Life After the 30 Second Spot, I wrote a chapter on what I called consumer-generated content. And what I what I realized afterwards is that YouTube had not even been founded yet. So I, I th- what are your thoughts about this idea of, um, you know, needing to have to name something, needing to, you know, for it to be legitimate, the word social media has to exist. Well, I don't think the word social media existed when the Clue Train Manifesto was written. So what I, I would love to hear your thoughts on on this idea of everything having having to be labeled and bucketed and categorized versus this free spirited approach, which is what you do, which is you just go and do it. So obviously I didn't think anything had to be named before I did it or before I shared it. Um it was up to others to give give these things names and video blogging became 
vlogging, um, putting audio on the web, and listening to it on an iPod got the name podcasting because the device you were listening to it on was an iPod and every many people with my friends were like, why are we calling it podcasting? Why don't we just call it, you know, radio on the web or something that, that makes sense for people to understand. Um, so the things get named and it's weird because now we think of podcasting as audio on the web. And back when I, when podcasting first started, podcasting was delivering audio via RSS 2.0 media enclosures to listen to later. So the technical definition, that's that's what that is. And then it it's like Kleenex's t- tissues. Podcasting right. is is just listening to you know to audio and 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 video blogging and vlogging. It's all it's just kind of a video on the web. It it, it just becomes that. Um, but it seems it it seems you you worry less about getting credit, you oh, know, I d- for, right, right, and and so that so the the other thing I was thinking is you know the 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 old uh, the old line which by the way Bob Farnham says sort of like someone asking to roll up your car window, um, what's that? What is, how do you do that? <laughs> but you know the other thing it, it comes back to this quote you've probably heard me say it many times on the show which is the saying which is you know, the, um, there are two types of people, pioneers and settlers. The pioneers get shot and the settlers take the land. And you, you know, you're a humble guy. You're a modest guy. You have no ego that is at least outwardly visible uh, to people. And yet there are these opportunists that come in and take the credit when, when there are OGs, uh, real OGs like yourself that that not only paved the way, you blazed the path. And I think the thing that it needs to be said is, and you mentioned it briefly, you've always helped people, right? They say helping is the new selling. You always helped first. You were always how-toing. You were always, you know, that was your niche, which is being able to help other people, empower other people, not only to get to the same level that you were at, but even emulate and bypass you. And some of them probably even took the credit for it. I think that's a very unique, special type of person. You don't see that every day. Well, I have found that by thinking to give first, the the uh, good always comes back to me. Um, I don't worry about credit. I'm happy to give everyone else credit um, and share everything. I so some people would start a class and do a you know a a paid subscription to teach people how to do these different things, and that's fine, and they make a ton of money. But I never thought that way. And by 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 giving, it's it's just from my experience is lots of good comes back. Um, I mean, you asked me when you were with the uh, ad agency and representing Panasonic, you asked me to get involved and sent me out to Las Vegas to to cover a conference, you know, and then that was expenses paid. So these were some of the things that came back to me because of of, of getting seen. <laughs> there, there you are. <laughs> That's back who in, did the, that? in the who, day. Honestly, who did that? Like that is, you know, and, and, you know, there, 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 there are too many things in this photo that should never be seen again. So let's go back to you. Yeah. I mean, so many good things happened to me by, by just giving away all my knowledge of, on this specifically video blogging. Um, you brought me out to CES uh, P- Panasonic was generous to give me cameras, which helped me then produce videos. And so I learned about video and then you got me out to CES and I got some Panasonic cameras, video cameras. And then that enabled me to produce better um, quality videos, which then people asked me to do videos for them. So then I started um, a consulting business where I had that for 
over a decade, producing videos, editing videos, working with people, um, in, just ma making videos. Um, one project I did, I went went into a healthcare company, and they wanted to have an employee database of their knowledge. And so I went in and each employee came into this room and I set up all these lights and cameras and I videotaped them and they would, they would give their experience into the camera and I would record it and edit it and put it in a database. And the thing was, some people were so nervous about talking to the camera. Um, part of that whole experience, the company found out which were their best on-camera people, and then they became the spokesman, like as a side effect of, of me doing that. But um, you know, I had a lot of opportunities by giving. Then I so I got the the equipment, and that led me to doing um, live streaming for companies. People would bring me in to do live streaming. This was before you know, you would hire a company to do live streaming. There was me, Steve Garfield, who would come in to do live streaming of a whole conference. And I would bring in um, two laptops, four ways of getting online just to make sure I wouldn't lose the connection during this whole day of live streaming. And I was the live stream streaming person. So, um, you know, I built up my presence to, to be asked to do a lot of different things. So that's where... Um, you know, the money making opportunities came in, um, not by hoarding and keeping my knowledge secret, but by by giving it away and that that work that worked for me. So I don't know if I heard this right. Um, so feel free to correct me uh, if I if I if I didn't. Um, but you actually said that coming to CS, you know, and, and yes, flight and, and hotel was paid for and you got and, and you got a camera. Um, but your time is still immensely valuable. And, but coming to CS actually played a major role in, in springboarding or, or propelling you to specialize and create a consulting business. Is that, did I hear you right? It was part of it. I mean, I already had, um, I had the you said like having a better camera, like right. I mean, I mean that's like, you know the funny thing is I, I'd never heard that before. Yeah, a newer camera, a better camera, the the best camera, a smaller camera, and you know wow. I use that. And actually at CES, I this is in the time period of back when Jimmy Fallon was starting, not the Tonight Show. Before the Tonight Show, he did Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, and he. Before he even started Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> yeah, I tweeted him to see if he would come watch night. Maybe he's watching. When he, before he did Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, he started doing video on the web. And he came on and he did a video and he said, We're going to do a new video blog every day. And I'm going to show you behind the scenes of how we make a TV show. Well, that is something that I love behind the scenes. TV production, all that stuff. But actually, he was saying it wrong. And I told him this. I sent a message into him at the show. And I said, you said... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Steve Steve Garfield sending unsolicited advice <laughs> oh, yeah. to, to streamers. <laughs> Where have I heard that story before? Uh, hang on. My, my producers are saying we actually have footage of that. So... January 1st, 2004, it's the year of the video blog. Hi everybody, it's December 8th, 2008, and welcome to Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. This is the first installment of the nightly blog, or vlog, if you want to use that word, uh, and we're going to have one here every night here at 12.30. Okay, so I'm so excited. Our, our first video went up last night uh, on the web blog. I want to thank Steve Garfield, who commented, we're getting comments already, this is exciting. Steve Garfield said that it's not, we're not web blogging every night. The whole thing is a web blog and we're adding videos. Thank you for the correction. Uh, I appreciate that. Now let's look at the video uh, comments that you're putting in here, these questions. The first one up is from Steve Garfield, our old pal. It's great to see you video blogging. I love the behind the scenes stuff and I'm excited at the possibility for you including content from people formerly known as the audience. What are you gonna do with that? How are you gonna include us? Thanks a lot. 
Thanks. That's a good question, Steve Garfield. Uh, we want to use the audience as much as we possibly can. Like, like we're doing for the webisodes, this will carry over to our show. I'm a big fan of what Colbert did with the green screen challenge, what you guys did with the McCain video and stuff like that. I think it's awesome. So whatever's coming out, whatever, however we can incorporate technology with the, and, and the audience and, and our show, it, you will be on the show. Uh, it's going to be fun. This is going to be great. Thanks. Good question. <laughs> That's timely. Good, good job getting that video up. And uh, you know, and and hang on, a, hang on a second. We actually, uh, we just, you know, we we have uh, we have producers are telling me that we have a, a live uh, shout out from uh, Jimmy Fallon coming in for you. Hey, what's happening over here now on Facebook? Steve Garfield. I, I love Steve Garfield. Steve Garfield. Hi. How are you, Steve? Steve Garfield was one of the uh, pioneers of the vlogging world. I didn't even know what a vlog was. I, he, he, he helped me. He helped me out. Anyways, guys, you have a great uh, week of tonight's shows. As I said, Jack Black, Angela Bassett, Josh Groban. <laughs> there you go. The most, the most famous shout out ever on my show. That's hilarious. That's fantastic. So. You know, uh, Bob, Bob says this is awesome because you weren't cool <laughs> enough or, uh, already. But you know, Steve, there's there's an um, there's an amazing thing about you know uh, about uh, even the Jimmy Fallon story, right? And it's the fact that you you know you put yourself out there, you put yourself out there, you um, you know you've reached out. Uh, almost, you know, on a regular basis to some of these celebrities and stars, um, and and you do it consistently, and you do it with heart, uh, and you do it with soul, you know, and and so you end up building this amazing relationship, uh, so to speak. And uh, I think it's just it's a beautiful story, and it it's why I, I selected this for you, which is. Uh, the quote of the episode, both criticism and praise is part of putting yourself out there. People are afraid. People are fearful. People just don't know how to do that. How do you do it? And, and, and is your secret maybe the fact that you just do it with unbridled joy? Uh, well, I, so I do it without looking for anything in return um it might be where, where i'm where i'm coming from and uh and well i'm not looking for praise either and the criticism is fine but you know i i, I just give without thinking of getting back like adam grant says now that photo you just showed of me and jimmy Wait, not not, not this no, photo, not right? Oh, I, I, I'm I'm sorry, not not that photo. You mean you mean this photo? Sorry. Yeah. So. So I was helping Jimmy behind the scenes on getting his video blog straightened out and having it the right way, and not saying he's making a new video blog every night, just like he said. So he appreciated that. And the funny thing is, I was his first video comment on his blog first comment on his blog. And then it was the first video comment on, on his blog. And then when we were at CES, when you brought me to CES, I saw that Jimmy Fallon was going to be there with NBC at the NBC booth. I don't know if you realize this happened. So I went over to the NBC booth and I saw Jimmy Fallon in person and I went, Hey, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. And he said, Oh, Hey, Steve Garfield. <laughs> Which he says, you know, back at the show, we we don't call you Steve. We we call you S Steve Garfield. <laughs> One word, like you call me Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. And so it this was another this was one of the great moments of of video and what it how powerful it was. He he I felt like I knew him. He felt like he knew me. And that's the power that we discovered in, in the power of video blogging. So at CES at that moment, I asked him if he'd do an interview and he said, yeah, and I did a, an interview with him at CES that you'd brought me to. It, it, it's amazing. Everything is connected. I, I actually think of, um, 
I was listening to Madeleine Albright uh, on Tim Ferriss's show. And I remember she said something that everything that happened in her life was, you know, to facilitate the next thing. Every single thing that happened. It's not even that things happen for a reason. It's that from e everything was just a stepping stone. And she couldn't have done what she did. And she wouldn't have done what she did without every piece and every part, the good, the bad, you know, and, and the ugly. Um, I can relate and, to that. I can relate to that 100%. I can see that in my life. Yeah, for sure. Every single thing that I've volunteered at, so that the the way I learned video was volunteering at Cablevision. They they didn't pay. I, I went there every night after work to learn how to use all that equipment, how to do video, how to shoot, edit. And then that all those skills led to learning, figuring out how to put video on the web. Because I spent and invested all that time in learning, you know, how to do all this stuff. That's why I'll I'll text people and say, Please put your laptop on a stack of books. <laughs> you know, get your camera up at eye level. Don't you know? Look down at it. So I, I still think now that still a that peeve. To me, I think you told that to me after uh, enough episodes of you staring into my nostril <laughs> head. Yeah, you definitely especially, told that to me. Yeah, especially during the pandemic, I told everybody that I would and, be and, and, and you know what? Messaging I them. I can't show it to you right now. Um, but but only I think this week for the first time I bought this a stand you know a, kind of like a Z stand that folds up and everything. Oh. But but until this week I was using two Nike shoe boxes. <laughs> yeah, I remember time. seeing those. Yep, nothing wrong with that. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing so, at all. So I I want to just repeat something you said because I feel like there are so many amazing pieces of wisdom here. Which is it wasn't you know we've spoken about happiness we've spoken about um about joy um but something that's so interesting about you is this idea of uh, of volunteering it's not just everything you did it's volunteering it's stepping up it's raising your hand it's saying yeah well, I'll, I'll help i'll participate i don't even know i don't even know what will become of it um i just think that's amazing and and it's Thursday, so it's Tom Morris Philosophy Day. He sent this in. Uh, I, as always, I don't, I don't listen or watch his his stuff because I want to experience it for the first time. But this vignette is on something that could have been written, I guess, uh, in honor of Steve Garfield. It's happiness. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Morris. I want to talk to you for a second about happiness. You know, Aristotle said, no matter what you're doing everybody's really seeking for the same thing. His word for it was eudaimonia. It's often translated as happiness, but in Greek, it can be rendered maybe more accurately as well-being. It's not just about a feeling that you might have that, that passes, comes and goes, but it's about a state of being in the world. I'm getting ready to address an international conference of experts on happiness in a few days, and I'm going to share some simple thoughts I've had as a philosopher. I've come to think that happiness consists in a disposition or a tendency toward three things. One is contentment. Number two is fulfillment. And number three is enjoyment. First of all, contentment, an ability to accept the present as being what it is. A contented person is not boiled up in in negative emotions, you know, stewing in resentment and bitterness and anger and anxiety, sometimes rage. A content person lets go of negative emotions and just accepts the present as being what it is. Now, it's compatible with wanting the future to be very different, but uh, a contentment is kind of a peacefulness of spirit. Uh, that's a subjective matter. An objective matter is that of fulfillment. I think of fulfillment as the potential that you have being gradually realized in the world. In other words, a realization of your potential for good. Uh, if you're living in a fulfilling way, you're objectively realizing your potential and you're subjectively enjoying that realization or actualization. 
A fulfilled person has friends. A fulfilled person has projects, things they love, things they enjoy doing, which brings us to number three, enjoyment. Enjoyment I take as consisting of two things, pleasure and love. Um, a happy person takes pleasure in what they do. Uh, you can't enjoy everything, but if you take pleasure in most things, those things go better. And then even deeper is love. The people who love their lives, who love their work, who love their friends, who feel loved, are people who have that disposition that we often call happiness. And to have these ideas is to have tools so that once you understand the breakdown in terms of contentment, fulfillment, and enjoyment, you can work toward realizing those things in a more ordinary way day to day. I hope these ideas help you to be happy. Tom Morris, awesome. I yeah, love that. I mean, it, it could have been written about you. I mean, it could have been written about many of the things that that we're discussing. Um, and, and, I, and I thought actually, you know, because I want to make sure this is video, right? So we can still, we can cut it, we can slice it. You know, it could be the last 10 minutes talking about the book, but we can cut that and and put that and put that up front. Uh, I will get there, but I just want to show people and share with people just some of the. Um, I don't even have your uh, you and 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 Carol. I, you did this fitness program like for the last two years, but uh, your daily walks. I mean, so many things. Here are just some of the highlights. Um, <laughs> nice. This this was this was classic. So this for those for people that are wondering, um, this was this is a still. Obviously, it's a photograph, but Steve used used it, and I think maybe it was part gag and part maybe not. But he used it on Zoom um, as a as a background. So when you were in a Zoom with like I don't know 30, 40 thumbnails. <laughs> It, it 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 not only you know you could see him but he was paying attention and he got me on this it was one of our zoom after shows on the show and i just saw steve was just he was dialed in he was focused he didn't even move until eventually he explained to me do you want to do a, a split screen there steve oh there we go that was absolutely brilliant <laughs> Wait, which one is real? Oh, I wasn't sure. All right, so let let's see what else we got. Um, uh, I mean, this this is another crazy thing. You basically taught. I mean, it's all video, right? You taught yourself, or I mean, through YouTube, how to paint. I did how, on YouTube. Yep. And 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 let's just let's just be clear, like really well. Really, Thank you. Really well. I can't believe it myself. I had a good teacher. I mean, this is just incredible. I, I'm I'm staring. I don't even know if pe people should stare at the screen right now to see uh, the texture of uh, this canvas. Uh, that has amazing. depth. That 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 painting has depth because now I go to craft shows and I look at the paintings that some of the artists have in their one dimensional line drawings, and and this this person on YouTube did a fantastic job. It's taken me step by step to, to come out with that at the end. It was so inspiring and exciting. Really, really fun. Well, he has he has another thing, which is, you know, uh, it is, oh, uh, Bob, Bob Farnham uh, comments and he says he wants full screen. Well, if that's what you want, that's what you'll get. How about that? I think he wanted to see full screen of the last one. Because you, mean, you were showing, mine is below. I know that. Can you you can't get I, that? Well, let me let me tell you something. I'm going to give you a little bit of advice too, Mr. Steve Garfield <laughs> from stevegarfield.com. You sent some of these images to me and they were not landscape, they were portrait. Uh you committed a cardinal sin, my friend. Uh and that's why they didn't fit on the screen. Hmm, interesting. I'll try and do better. <laughs> but let's Let's keep moving. Here's another one. I mean, you know video, um, but you've also discovered photography. Uh, and I think this is one of your photographs being used in a magazine. On a magazine cover. 
my first magazine cover, which was amazing. A local uh, magazine. <laughs> Thank you. The local magazine asked me if I wanted to shoot photos for them. So I started shooting photos around and I, my photos started showing up in the magazine. And then they asked if I wanted to shoot a cover. And I said, yes, I went to that photo shoot. And I, so I have a shelf full of cameras um, from different ones I've evaluated over the years. Samsung, Canon, Panasonic, I mean, you, you name it. So I brought like four different cameras. I went to the photo shoot. I brought a light kit, met them at the golf course. We did a nice sh shoot outside. I'm using all the cameras. I says, you know what? Let me just use my iPhone to take a few. And I used my iPhone to take a few. The iPhone was the cover image. The iPhone was the best camera. And so then on the future photo shoots, I didn't bring any of the old cameras anymore. I'm so used to using the iPhone to shoot video and photos and i know how to how to use it so well that i don't need any of the other big cameras anymore and it, it got the cover photo which was you know very exciting to for me as a photographer to get a to, to get, get get a cover like that well there's one more thing that i want to and maybe the most important thing that you did over the last two years when everybody was i don't know teaching themselves how to cook or uh, learn a new language. And let's be honest, they weren't doing any of those things. They were just binge watching Netflix. Um, you again used video to create something that is um, timeless, uh, magic, um, and and deeply, deeply personal. Uh, and of course, I'm referring to uh, say the words. My what mom, is... Millie. Hello, Millie. <laughs> hello, hello, Millie. I did a weekly show with my mom because she's in a, um assisted living facility. And actually, they were quarantined at least three times. And that was really tough on her because she's such a people person. And I hooked up with uh, StreamYard and had a weekly show with my mom and called it Hello, Millie and brought her on and um she's one of the internet's oldest bloggers because i taught her how to do it and we did a weekly live video show and had a lot of fun doing it you know i've basically uh, i've even guest starred or uh, or uh, i don't know photo bombed or video bombed or stream bombed um the show as well what i realized coming out of it steve is um First of all, not uh, first. I, I've said this to you many times, you know, live and and through comments and privately, that that you are the world's greatest son, and um, you know what you've done for your mom when she's been, you know, cooped up and and isolated. The connection uh, between a mother and her and her son, but more importantly, the video that you have, the questions you've asked her, the time you've spent with her. That will be time and that will be moments that will be passed on to many, many, many um, generations, um, not just of Garfields, I'm sure, but of people, um, just in terms of, of showing the way and lining the way. Um, and, and your mom is just a, a, a very special woman and she's uh, quite spectacular. So thank you. Tell Millie I said hello. Well, she she cares about you too, Joseph, and asks about you all the time, and 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 hopes that you're doing well. Well, I'm I'm doing all the better to hear her voice, or to see her face, or to have you on the show. Well, Steve, Steve, the last thing that we are going to touch on, which is maybe the most important thing, um, although the most important thing I feel is just you and I hanging out uh, together, is you wrote a book called Get Seen. And now you've written your autobiography. And I'm, I'm like, I have to push back, which is how can you write an autobiography when the story is not yet told? The story is not yet finished, but the book is called Got, <laughs> Got Seen uh, and uh, as opposed to Got Milk. Um, tell us about this. Uh, tell us about, you know, pick, pick, pick your poison, pick any moment, or should I pick uh, whether it's a ram random thing about you one of the 17 principles of the life, according to Steve, a notable moment. I got the lists right here. Um, but tell us about the autobiography. Why did you want to write this book? 
And then, of course, there's a personal story as well where I played a role in this book, unbeknownst to me. Well, I was at the Inbound Marketing Conference once again, and I loved their little, um, I forget what they called it, maybe golden sessions, where the topics weren't about inbound software itself, but people's stories and personal stories. And those are the sessions that I loved. And I went in there and our friend David Meerman Scott was um, moderating the session. And another friend of mine, Laura gassner Odding, was in there. And David Meerman Scott says, one of our speakers isn't going to show up. He's like, Steve, can, can you go on and, and do five minutes? And I was like, I normally could do that, right? You would, That's very easy for me. But I was just like, I don't think I don't have I didn't have five minutes prepared and that I didn't feel right about that. I was like, I should have five minutes ready to go at any time. I mean, that is what a speaker should do. And then the speaker showed up and I was I was fine. So afterwards, I went up and talked to Laura and I was like, Laura, you know, I should have had five minutes ready. She said, Steve, you need to sit down and you need to write five minutes get five topics ready to go for five minute talk and have it with you. So at any time you'll be ready to speak. And I want you to get that done. But, and she gave me like a deadline, two months, and I'm going to check you on that. <laughs> and so I was like, wow, I, I, I really took that to heart. And I says, I'm going to do it. So then when I sat down to pick five things, I was like, this was really hard to, to, to pick five things. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to write down everything. And then at the end, I'll cut it down and I'll pick five things. So the way the book got written was I just threw all my stories. I just opened up pages on the Mac and I just started writing stories. And I had a lot of you know photos and things to add in as backup. And I just wrote all my stories. And then it became a book. And I thought each chapter should have you know, some kind of moral or some kind of help. Again, I'm thinking help. So each each chapter has some some advice. And so now I've got 17 rules of life and now I need to get that down to five. So I'm almost there. Well, I, I tell you what, I tell you what I'm, and, and by the way, I love the fact that, you know, what you see in the background um, is the cover of, uh, well, it actually isn't the cover. The cover of Join the Conversation was very similar. Um, but I've always loved this ability to let let the mosaic of our life, of life, of community, you know, of fellow bloggers, um, of our memories. To me, that is the ultimate mosaic. And and so, and maybe just share with people very quickly, um, when, I, when I said to you, come on the show, um, something kind of very special happened, which I'm, you know, quite proud of, although I didn't know I did anything regarding the book. Oh, right. So you, I guess a guest canceled or something. And it's like, can you come on the show? And I said, sure, I'll do the show. What day you gave me the date. And then you sent me the pre-show document, which says, you know, ask me different, what's my URLs and things you want to have on the show. And it says, do you have a book to promote? And I was like, oh, it's this book I've been working on for like two years. I says, you know what? I'm going to give it one more edit and hit publish and, and, and put that up on Amazon. Um, and so I did. But, but encouraged by you, by the date. Another, just like Laura encouraged me to write the book, you gave me that deadline of the date of the show. And I says, you know what? I got I to get this done. And so I, I made it live on Amazon. I'm... You know, like I, I'm, I, I don't even have words to describe how happy I am that I, unbeknownst, completely uh, could play a role like that. And it, but again, it comes back to the Steve Garfield philosophy, you know, of life, which is just to, you know, just to volunteer, just to just to do stuff. You know, like for me, I was like, hey, come on the show, um, and 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 look what it created. So. You know what Guess quote what? I you know what quote I love? The enemy of done is perfect. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and I'm like, let's you know, just do it and get it done. And that's 
<laughs> everything I've done is imperfect. <laughs> All right. So, so, so here's what we're going to do as, as we wind down and, and, you know, I don't mind going a few minutes over with you because you're, you're Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. <laughs> You know, and by the way, if you want to connect with Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com, you can do that at stevegarfield.com. That's the best way to do it. It's not yep. just a logo or tagline. Or, no, or, everything's or there. <laughs> Everything, including the book, is at stevegarfield.com. My, um, one of my pet peeves is when people say, well, if you want to reach me on Facebook, here's my URL. If you want to reach me on Twitter, here's this other thing. Here's my website. It's this other cryptic thing and you, you don't even remember the first and second thing when you're trying to memorize write down the third thing so i've always been consistent in everything of my social media is steve garfield my website stevegarfield.com and then from there you can get anywhere you want to where you want to go when i invested in the brewery and it was a, just a handful of employees i started up their social media and so at that time we we put Lord Hobo Brewing Company as the name on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, the website, everything was the same. So if you want to find them, you just go to lordhobobrewing.com, not Lord Hobo on Twitter, Lord Beer on, you know, Instagram. It's all consistent. So <laughs> I fixed that in my own website. It's just all Steve Garfield. All right. So uh, to have a little bit of fun, uh, this is called the the Wheel of Names. Uh, so we've got it assigned to 17 numbers and we're going to spin the wheel and determine which of these uh, which of these lessons we're going to share. So let's let's spin. Oh, this is very exciting and very low tech, right? And low budget. Uh, this is this is actually high tech. I love it. Right, number number sixteen. Number sixteen is uh, share via social media. Yeah, that's tell, a good one. Tell us about that. We'll we'll do a few. Share via social media. You know, I've met so many people via social media starting back in the day when it was just nice and friendly, but it it still is like that because I can still reach out to people. And, and give them a tip or give them some advice, like put your laptop on, on some books or this is wrong or that is wrong. And they'll still come back to me and, and say, hey, thanks, you know, and I'll make a, a connection with someone. So it's still so powerful to, to connect with other people over social media. And before social media, there was really, there was no way to do that. I, I worked at a, a video production company one time and it was a HD video production company. And we made these videos that was like the ocean. And it was on a it was on it was on a cable channel called the Move Channel, M-O-O-V. And we would have a whole crew, and I was one of the back behind the scenes people. And um I was on um uh cable cable tv.com or some message board for people who were into cable tv and i put a message up there and i said hey i'm from move lab and some person who was a viewer got on there and said you're from move lab i love i love that channel and i and i can talk to you and i had a conversation with the guy way before social media and i saw that power you know people were slow to pick up on the power of social media and right. i could see it all right, let's do let's do one more. What will it be? I know, I know, I know. It's Number five, a, maybe? No, one, two. We have we have a winner. It's number two, and number two is be interested. Show that you are interested in people, and they will be interested in you. My mom taught me this. She was a Dale Carnegie fan. That's right. You know what the most boring thing is, is to meet someone new and have them give you a monologue of their whole life and not ask you one thing about yourself. It's like, what am I getting out of this interaction? It, it, it is the worst. So I am always interested in other people. And actually, I know how to have a conversation. Some people don't. I mean, they'll like just do this monologue. Um, but if someone says, 
hey, I went to the store, I will respond with, oh, you went to the store? What did you buy? And, and go back and forth. So, I mean, my mom is really good at making friends, talking to people, and being interested is a great tip. All right, one one more, uh, because this is so much fun. Oh, please be a good one. Come da, on, come da, on. Da, 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 da. <gasps> 13. Ooh. 13, what is 13? 13 says, these are all the long ones, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> this is an interesting one. Always say yes and no. Be known as the person who always says yes. Keep in mind that if you say yes to everything, you might be too busy to say yes to the most important things. That is going to be a quote in a future episode of the show. I, when I worked at the radio station um, and I was working on, it, it was a whole complex with different morning radio shows. And so I was on my radio show, but I also went to go talk to the people on the nearby radio shows and the, the people at the station, they'd say, Hey, Steve, can you help us with this? And I was like, no, oh, you know, I don't know. Cause they might've wanted to train me to be a on air DJ at the other station. And the, the manager, the pr program manager said to me, you know, Steve, if you say no, we're going to kind of know you as the guy who says no, or doesn't want to do something. So he gave me advice. He said, you should say yes, because then we'll, look at you as the person who says yes. And rather than go to the sad people who say, no, I don't want to do it. People will go to you because you say yes. So that was great advice. So I use that advice for a long time in my life. When some, when I was ever asked, I would go, yes, I'll do it. Yep. I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. And then came when I had my consulting business and I started saying yes to all these little projects, a big one came in and I was like, oh, I can't do it. Because I'm busy with all these little ones that maybe, you know, I just, I, I did because they came came up, up around and I really wasn't interested in doing them or I didn't like them, but I always said yes. So then I learned to say no to some of the ones I didn't like, leaving myself open to the bigger opportunities that I really wanted to say yes to. Very profound, Mr. Garfield. Uh, this has been Steve Garfield, the author of Got Seen. This is also Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. If you want to follow him, you can do that on Instagram, uh, on Twitter. Guess what? They're He's all the Steve same. Steve Garfield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, find him on Meta Facebook, Meta Book. Guess what? Steve Garfield and his channel on YouTube. Guess what? It's Steve Garfield as well, as is his website, stevegarfield.com, where you can find Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. And last but not least, by Got Seen, Steve Garfield, an autobiography on stevegarfield.com or amazon.stevegarfield.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's the time that you've all been waiting for. After all this time, 300 guests, what does Chuck Norris have to say? about Steve Garfield at stevegarfield.com. You are Chuck Norris approved. Well, there we go. Fantastic. It was, it was an absolute pleasure. Good luck with the book. And I'm looking forward to my autobiography part two coming out very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Joseph, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for watching the show about hope, positivity, optimism, and if there's time left over, a little bit of marketing with your host, multiple author and global keynote speaker, Joseph Jaffe. If you like the show, tell a friend or two. Please subscribe to the show. And if you want to get inside news, previews of upcoming guests, and much more, visit josephjaffe.com slash subscribe to sign up for the show's newsletter. And despite the best ministrations of your wife, you still look ugly. <laughs> <laughs>